This is the story of Sunita Candlewall. Sunita Candlewall was born in 1969 in the town of Laxmangar, which is in Rajasthan, India. When she was born, a large birthmark at the back of her head was bleeding, so her parents applied talcum powder to the area, and the bleeding stopped after three days. When Sunita was two years old, she began talking about her past life. She said she was from the town of Kota, which is about 360 kilometers away from where Sunita lived. Also, Kota had a population of about 300,000 people at the time. Sunita also said she had two brothers. Her family had a silver shop, and when she was eight years old, her cousin pushed her, and she fell from a small height and landed on her head. Also, she said her family owned a safe. Sunita's family had not traveled to the town of Kota, and they had no interest going there. Sunita was upset because she wanted to be taken to her past life family, so she refused to eat food until she was taken to Kota to meet her past life family. Eventually, Sunita was taken to the hospital because she was malnourished. Sunita wanted to see her past life family so badly, but her current family didn't seem to care. When Sunita was 5 years old, a friend of Sunita's parents talked with their parents and told them that they should take Sunita to Koda because Sunita might be able to find her past life family and that may cause Sunita to stop starving herself. Sunita thought her parents were taking her to Koda, but they actually took her to a different town. As you could imagine, Sunita was not happy about this. But then her parents actually took her to Koda. While she was in Koda, Sunita remembered the general location of the silver shop that her previous family owned. While talking with people who worked in silver shops, Sunita's parents met a silversmith named Pabu Deol Maheshwari. He had a daughter who fell from a building. According to Maheshwari, his daughter Sakuntala was playing with a cousin on a balcony that had very low rails. They might have pushed each other in a playful manner, but then Sakuntala fell off the balcony and she landed on her head. Sadly, she did not survive the fall. Sakuntala died at the age of 8. Maheshwari's description of his daughter's death exactly matched Sunita's memories of her death in her previous life. As you know, Sunita said she was pushed off a building by her cousin and she fell on her head and died at the age of 8. Though the hospital records didn't state which specific part of the head got injured in the fall, the researcher in this case believed the location of Sunita's birthmark matches the location of Sakuntala's fatal injury because the hospital records stated that Sakuntala's right ear was bleeding after the fall, which is an indication there was a fracture to the base of the skull. Sunita made 25 correct statements about the life and death of Sakuntala, but she also made two incorrect statements about Sakuntala and three unverified statements about Sakuntala. Sakuntala's family accepted Sunita as a reincarnation of their deceased daughter. Sunita visited Sakuntala's family on the holidays, and when Sunita got married, Sakuntala's family partially paid for the wedding. Later, Sunita's family learned that Sunita's maternal uncle met with Maheshwari before. Both the uncle and Maheshwari were silversmiths, and they did business with one another a few times, even though the uncle lived in a different town. However, the silversmiths did not share personal information with one another. Hence, the uncle did not know about the death of Maheshwari's daughter. If you like spirituality, science, art, or animals, then be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to turn on the notification bell.